Hello and welcome to Nikon Report, your weekly roundup for all the latest Nikon news and all other photographic announcements that we found interesting. It's Constantine here and over there. <laughs> it's Becky. Hi. Yes. Are you finally on another side of the pond? I am. Yeah, on a completely different time zone to you right now. Okay. Are you ever coming back to UK or you permanently moved to United States? <laughs> I will be coming back in a few weeks, yes. <laughs> and then you will see me again. Can't get rid of me that easily. In 2027. But this is the last podcast of this year. Then we're going to go on a little break and we should be back sometime in January. And in between, you'll see a couple of videos from us. One is going to be the Nikon in year 2023 and also predictions for next year as well. But for now, it's a short one, but the main news of the week is the rumor of the Nikon Z6 Mark III, the upcoming specs, and someone made a mock-up in Photoshop. So we're going to discuss this for about an hour or so. <laughs> Not quite an hour, but we will discuss this because this is exciting news, something that a lot of people have been hoping and waiting for for a while. First up, the rumor is that we will see the camera in the first quarter of 2024, which would essentially mean January to April in Nikon terms. We actually, Nikon call this normally Q4 because they go... April to April or Mar um, April to March, but for the rest of the world, we'll call it Q1 of 2024. So what do you think? Do you think that's accurate? Are we talking beginning of this year? Well, I mean, a little spoiler alert for our predictions video. Yes, we are thinking it's going to happen anytime between January and end of March this year. So I think a lot of what we're going to talk about now is kind of logical. So I don't really see this particular list of specifications or predictions any different from any other person's predictions because a lot of it is basically logical. If you, if you put things together, if you look at the past releases, that all will make sense. Now, what do you think? January, March, or do you think it's actually going to go to, let's say, April or May this year? Well, I think if they put enough of a gap between the ZF and the Z6 III, looking at the rest of the specs... I would imagine it would be closer to March than January, just so that they give the ZF enough breathing space post-Christmas to kind of not take away the limelight from it. Okay, but do you think it's going to be the first half of March or the second half of March? Because people <laughs> do really care about that. They do. March is going to go by so quickly, but I think it will probably be the first half of March. All right, so now let's move on to the sensors. So Nikon Rumor prediction is... 24.5 megapixel BSI sensor. There is another rumor going around about this 30 plus AK 33 megapixel sensor that Sony has. What do you think? Would you go with a 24 or 33 megapixel sensor yourself? Um, I think 33. I would be disappointed is probably not the right word, but I I would be a bit underwhelmed if it was another 24.5 megapixel sensor. Um, I know that you and I have talked about this a lot, and my feeling is that now is the time for that sensor to be relegated to other models like the Z5, for example, Z5 upgrade, Z5 Mark II. And I feel like the Z6 Mark III should have a 33 megapixel sensor, but whether or not Nikon will agree with me is another matter. I absolutely agree with you. I think enough is enough. 24 megapixel sensor has to be retired into the sunset. You know, it's not that it's bad. 24 megapixel is a gold standard, but it would be nice to see something different in Nikon's lineup. Even 33 megapixel sensor, technically in terms of pixel difference, it's not a significant difference between 24 and 33. We also have XP7 processor, which can produce 20 frames per second at 45 megapixels. So doesn't matter if you have 24 or 33, the amount of data is actually is going to be lower and that will allow for potentially higher frame rate as well. So I personally think there's nothing wrong with going slightly higher resolution than 24. But again, if Nikon decides to go with 24 megapixel, that's totally fine. I personally think that 33, that's where it's at. Yeah, I think that's a winner for sure. Now, the next spec was better ergonomics compared to the Z6. Do you feel like the Z6... As you and I have both had one for many years, do you feel like there's something missing in the ergonomics of the Z6? Um, well, I think when those cameras came out first, uh, I was always saying that we need a bigger body. Right. And finally, about three years later, Z8 kind of answered all my praise, really. You know, So we mm -hmm. finally got a body for professional people. And while Z6 and Z7 
it's a nice little camera. It's definitely nice to have. I think it's, uh, you know, it has a good grip, overall good build quality. The hanging pinky situation is real. And, uh, and you know, one of the things that where you have to really have a touch, the third party grip, just to extend the bottom of the camera, I, you know, a lot of people use those. We've been using those on our cameras, you know. So, so I think, yes, if they do improve ergonomics with a kind of potential idea of evolving Z6 to kind of a more pro model instead of semi-professional, then that definitely will require a slightly bigger body. Now, if you're going to look at the mock-up that someone made very recently, it's just on Nikon Rumors, it looks like it's definitely smaller than Z8, but it is bigger than Z6, Z7 cameras. And I think it's a nice compromise. Now, the only problem with that is we're going to think, well, do we need a consumer camera similar to Z6? And would that become a Z5 Mark II? Mm. Because now Z6 is going to be a professional body. Because if we start to get all the higher frame rates, if we start to get all the pre-captures and all that, then I wonder if the price is going to go up as well. So there's a lot of questions that's going to come with it, but also increasing size of the body that also will raise some questions for people who want slightly more consumer friendly, let's say, or smaller and more pocketable. Yes, I am inclined to agree with you on that. I think if the Z6 III ends up being one of those bigger cameras where it's not quite a Z8 but it's not as small and light as the Z6 then the Z5 Mark II suddenly has a purpose in life it has mm. it has true meaning because mm. Uh, not to spoil our predictions video, but we did talk about that and wonder kind of what the deal was with the Z5 Mark II. And I think that that would be the only way that a Z5 Mark II would make sense is if the Z6 III was a bigger camera. Saying that, having gone from myself a Z6 to a ZF and that extra little bit of weight, it does actually make a difference to have a heavier camera. So for some people, that might be a bit of a deal breaker. Yeah, and we would expect, because of the ergonomics, slightly improved weather ceilings as well. So, you know, so it would be on a level, let's say, Z8 and ZF cameras. So, sure. which is quite interesting, the ZF weather ceilings, according to Nikon, are very similar to Nikon Z8, which I was quite surprised about because I expect it to be more on par with Z6 and Z7 bodies. Mm. All right, so now in terms of video specs, we're going to get a jump from 4K on Z6 Mark II to 6K ProRes RAW. That's going to be first on Z6 series models because Z6 II didn't have raw functionality. So you could get an update on Z6 Mark I from Nikon and there would be a paid update and you would need to use a third party recorder in order to, to record this data, something like Atomos Ninja 5. And so that's what it is. I mean, all the video functionality upgrades, while maybe not as useful for still photographers, I'm sure that videographers in us will definitely appreciate that. Now, another feature that is rumored, which interests me for sure, is the pixel shift capability, which is also featured in the ZF and is something that I find quite unique in that you can create a much larger pixel file or a better file for low light and color reproduction. So having that in a 33 megapixel potentially camera could be quite good, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. And again, this is very predictable. As a lot of people pointed out, the ZF vibration reduction on the sensor is completely reworked unit. So it's effectively a completely new VI system on the sensor, better than on Nikon Z9 and Z8. And that's what effectively allows for pixel shift. At least we haven't seen pixel shift coming to Z9 and Z8 at this stage, maybe hopefully in the future firmware updates. But it makes sense that if there's a new redesign system, which is better than previous models, to install it a new model as well. It just makes sense overall. What's interesting to me is that we apparently will get a very angle LCD screen, and that would be similar to Nikon Z8 camera, not what we normally have on Nikon Z6. Again, that would effectively will require a slightly larger body as well, and that's where improved ergonomics probably will come into place. Yes, and I do prefer personally the very angle monitor of the Z8 over the flippable screen of the ZF. I do think that the Z8 and Z9 screen is also a little bit more robust. Obviously, as you say, if we're looking at a redesigned sensor, then it would make a lot of sense to have pixel shift. But it also means that we might have things added like VR on the focus point rather than across the sensor, which hasn't really been mentioned here in this list of specs. But 
I'm fairly certain that if we're getting a redesigned sensor, we are going to see a huge number of features from the ZF trickle over to the Z6 III as well. You know what else we're going to get from Nikon ZF? Uh, we're going to get the SD card as well as micro SD card slots. No, thank you. <laughs> Can do without that one. <laughs> exactly. Definitely. What do you reckon? Are we going to get a, a CF Express and SD card slot similar to Nikon Z8, or do do you reckon we're going to get two CF Express card slots, which would be similar to Z9? I sincerely hope that we end up with SD and CF Express because that combination, in my mind, is probably the best for semi pros and non professionals. Versus if you're a working pro and you need just one card type, CF Express is obviously the way to go. But I don't feel like the Z63 is is quite there, and it's not for that market. Whereas the ZF combination of the SD and micro SD is really bizarre. I hope it's not repeated in future cameras. That's all I can say. Yes, I, I think um, the thing about Nikon ZF is a very unique camera. And as you say, yes, maybe the screen is not the best screen in the world. It's a flippity, flippity screen compared to, let's say, you know, the very angle, all the good stuff. But again, the camera is very different design. So it's designed for very specific use where those features may not necessarily be needed in that particular camera. So the flippy screen actually serves the purpose. And I think that helps to also for Nikon to differentiate the cameras between the models. Now, back on to other specifications. That 6 Mark III will have a higher FPS frames per second than previous model. Well, if you're going to have XP7, which is a given at this stage, the XP7 can process a lot of data. So it just makes sense to have a very high frame rate, easily matching Z9 because resolution of the sensor, even at 33 megapixels, will be smaller than 45 megapixels. So that's all a given. But my question is then, if technically Z6 Mark III can capture more frames per second than the Z9 because of the smaller resolution sensor, how would they price it if you see what I mean? It's one of those things where you don't want to make it too expensive. And at the same time, you want to make sure that you're not going to gimp the camera in terms of technology. So where do you think they're going to go? Because if suddenly we can shoot, let's say, 60 frames per second, 24 megapixels, let's say, because XP7 allows for this, you know, wouldn't you can go this way? That's my conundrum, really. Yeah, it's a great question. And I do think that we are going to see a fairly significant price increase from the previous Z iterations because, of course, Z6 was that under £2,000 version of of the camera, whereas the Z6 II was around the £2,000 price mark. And I feel like with the amount of technology that could potentially go into the Z6 III, we're talking well over 2K, particularly looking at the ZF right now at its price point. So it's it's a tough one. I don't want Nikon to necessarily outprice themselves in terms of making it too expensive. But if they are offering all of this stuff, then the people that really want it will hopefully be willing to pay a little bit more for it. It, it does kind of then start to lead us into questions of what's going to happen with the Z7 Mark III, but that's a whole other discussion for another day. Exactly. And it also seems to me that a lot of people trying to see Z9H or Z9 Mark II in Z6 specifications, you know, Z6 Mark III specifications. And yeah. those are going to be two different cameras because it does I make sense to me to have Z9H or Z9 Mark II, let's say, but high speed with, let's say, you know, okay, global shots, uh, Z6 Mark III is not going to have this, but smaller resolution sensor, an extremely large buffer with extremely high frame rate, much faster a frame rate per second than a regular Z9. It would make sense and it would come at a price point, you know, it would cost basically the same as that nine. And, you know, then you have two different options, a 45 megapixel camera or let's say 24 megapixel camera, depending on your needs. Well, Z6 Mark III has to be under a certain price point. And the question is, well, how much technology can you include in the Gen 3 camera without making it too expensive? And obviously, I think whatever we have now in ZF technology wise is effectively will go into Z6 Mark III. That's just a given. Mm. But what's going to happen next? How much are they going to improve on that? That is the question. And that's why I'm thinking, let's say, 33 megapixel sensor makes a little bit more sense than you can differentiate not just more than a retro styling, but also, let's say, 33 megapixel sensor with better video functionality and, let's say, 24 megapixel sensor, you know, on Nikon ZF. So that's kind of my line of thoughts on that. Yeah, that does make sense. I completely agree with you that I do think we are going to see the vast majority of features from the ZF in the Z6 Mark III. It's almost as someone else on the internet that I've forgotten who it was now said 
uh, that the ZF feels like a 2.5 generation of the camera in that it's got a lot of the features that we might see in the Gen 3 of cameras. Uh, I'm totally with them on that. Moving back to the other rumored features, we're looking at mechanical and electronic shutter, which makes a lot of sense. Okay, so we're not going to get no shutter like Nikon Z9 and Z8. Yeah, I feel like that is not a feature that they would put in the Z6 Mark III. I think that may receive a little bit of criticism from punters, but to be honest, I don't know how. I don't know. Do you think it's just a cost uh, measure, really? Because uh, it's probably still quite expensive to just have electronic shots to do it all. And that's why they can't just bring the camera down to a certain price point at this moment. Exactly. That's exactly my thought. So I think that they will have the mechanical and electronic shutter. Also, there was the, the question of whether or not that would then bring things in like the sensor guard, because if you've got one, you can't have the other and vice versa. Mm. So it, it does mean that the Z6 III is not going to offer you everything that a Z8 would offer you. And I think that also will make it a much more clear cut decision for some people, because if you need the functionality of the Z8, that camera already exists and is fantastic and is an award-winning camera. If you are a Z6 II user, then there are probably some features that you would be able to do without for the sake of not spending £4,000 or $4,000 on an upgrade. That's true. And also, as you mentioned, sensor guard is quite important because that will actually make the body bigger because we talked about it when ZF came out. Yes. And effectively, they were trying to cramp everything to a fairly small body. And ZF is still a chunky camera. It's thicker than, let's say, original FM3. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, that would effectively increase the depth of the body. It makes sense that reworked ergonomics and slightly bigger body uh, of Gen 3 Z6 over, let's say, Gen 2 and Gen 1 Z6 cameras, it, that all kind of comes into place because if they would keep the same body and size, then effectively we wouldn't get a sense of guard. Again, speculation at this, this point, but it's just kind of when you put those things together, then it just starts to make sense in a way. Yeah, for sure. Let us know what you think about these specifications. Do you think that Nikon rumors are on the money? Do you think that we've actually guessed it right? And uh, when are we going to see the Z6 III? We'd love to hear from you. Speaking of award-winning cameras, the Z8 has won Camera of the Year at Petapixel. So for the second year in the row, Nikon have captured the top honor of Camera of the Year, this time with the Z8. Last year, it was the Z9. And while many might argue that the Z8 is a repackaged, smaller version of the Z9, it's not. Um, what it offers for the price is essentially unmatched in 2023. What Petapixel have said is it is the best camera for serious photographers and represents Nikon's huge turnaround from just a few years ago. It's highly capable for both photo and video use, making it more compelling for more users than even the Z9, even if it drops a few features to reach a more compact size and lower asking price. So very well done to Nikon for that because I think we agree that the Z8 is a superb camera. Yeah, it's a clearly a winner and just the sales of the camera speak for themselves. I think it's finally we have the body that answers a lot of questions that DSLR users had and, uh, you know, especially D850 users. I think at this point, at this point, we have a camera where DSLR users can say, yes, the mirrorless is now getting better. You know, obviously we had Z9, but because of the smaller light, it's a little bit cheaper as well. So a lot of it, it's definitely a more mass board camera, let's say that. And obviously next year with the release of Z6 Gen 3 and Z7 Mark III cameras, we will probably even get even bigger adoption from DSLR users. So I think for the 2023 to release this camera that does all this at that price point is really good from Nikon. And hopefully Nikon will continue that tradition of releasing winning cameras in 2024. There you go. Okay. Moving on to some third party news for you. The Nikon Z mount of the Viltrox 27mm f1.2 Pro APS-C lens is expected to be released by the end of this year. That's right. And then sometime next year, uh, Viltrox is also rumored to release Autofox 20mm f2.8 lens for mm -hmm. full frame Z bodies. So they already have it for Sony E mount. So it's a matter of time when the Z version will be released, but um, it's fairly small and compact, so probably will sit nicely on smaller bodies like Nikon ZF. Yeah, I love this mock-up. This this mock-up of, of a 20 mil on the ZF makes me want one. <laughs> yeah. So if it's That's small and light, sign me up. <laughs> exactly. They will come and buy it. 
That's all right. Now, we've also got a new player on the adapter side of things, Boris. Oh, God, I'm going to butcher this. Uh, Boriosa have created an FXZ AF lens adapter to allow you to focus your Fujifilm X mount lenses on Nikon Z cameras with autofocus. Yeah, I think instead of Boriosa, they should have called it Boris Johnson. You know, it's definitely a lot more memorable. <laughs> Bojo. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, you know what? It's small and thin, and the Fujifilm XF system has so many lenses in their lineup. They have this very small and fantastic 18 millimeter f2, which gives you equivalent of 27 mm. to 28 millimeters focal distance on the DX body. So, like, that was one of my favorite lenses. It's not optically perfect, but it's great for street photography. And as long as those focus is very reasonable uh, on those bodies via the adapter, I think that would be one of my first choices. The original 35 1.4 Fuji lens is also has quite a bit of characters. Again, it's one of those first lenses that were released for XF systems. So, it's actually an, a nice adapter to have, especially for people who are thinking of switching from Fuji to Nikon system, and then they can use their lenses on either ZFC or who knows, you can also use ZF in the crop mode and obviously full frame bodies as well, and then eventually upgrade to native Z lenses. Excellent. And now for some accessories that are coming out for the Nikon ZF by third party brands. So we first up have a genuine leather half case created for the ZF cameras with different colors available. These are mm -hmm. quite snazzy looking, aren't they? Yeah, what's your favorite? I mean, on a blue camera, none of those really work, <laughs> mm. <laughs> to be quite honest. But if I had a black camera, the olive green one looks quite nice. I find the the black and red one also very interesting. So these these cases actually have the built-in grip on them, which is interesting too. That's true. And you know me, Shaitha Brown is my gem. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I thought you might pick that one. <laughs> it's my favorite. It's my favorite German word. Yeah. Now on to some more grips for Nikon ZF. Company Newer. Newer? Newer? They, they, I know them for making... Uh, inexpensive lighting products and tripods and things like mm. that. I think they do everything really. And uh, they do this particular grief for Nikon ZF, which adds a red line to your favorite Nikon digital body. So just like old Nikon retro cameras, I find it a little bit tacky personally, but you know, we're not here to judge really. Yeah, it doesn't look great. I have to say the red line, obviously taken from the F3 and other cameras is quite iconic. Whereas Niwa putting it onto their hand grip, I think slightly less iconic. There's also a slightly peculiar little soft shutter release button that they've included there. Okay, that's cool. And what about thumb rest for your favorite Nikon ZF? I mean, those are very popular with the rangefinder style cameras. And uh, generally, they mount on the hot shoe, but they kind of go along the body. While this one is kind of hanging in the air, which doesn't look particularly safe to me. What do you think about that? That is odd. I do find on my ZF that my thumb tends to rest on the eye button, which means that quite often I'm accidentally pressing it and then bringing up the eye menu. That's just the shape of my hands and the ergonomics is something I need to get used to. I don't know that this thumb grip would necessarily help, but also, as you say, it sort of looks like it's hanging in the air, which feels like it could catch on things and potentially be a bit annoying. Yeah, it's hanging in the air just like it doesn't care, really. So. <laughs> That's right. Now, you know what looks cool? Actually, it's some wooden grips for Nikon ZF. I mean, those look beautiful, I think. They do. I think they are reasonably heavy, if I'm not mistaken. I have actually um, held some of these wooden grips before, and they do add quite a bit of weight to the camera, but they are beautifully crafted. So wooden hand grips, probably my favorite out of all of those options. Now, moving on to some slightly different news. This might make you feel old. Lego have announced the upcoming release of a Creator 3-in-1 toy, and it's called the Retro Camera. So they've announced that it will release Retro Camera I don't know what 39 is, but anyway. It's probably 39 frames per roll. Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. It will be released probably at the beginning of 2024 over here in our parts of the world. But in Japan, it is priced at 2,980 yen. And it even comes with little Lego rolls of film. Unfortunately, not a usable camera, but very cute all the same. I actually have the Nano Blocks, I think it is, version of a retro camera well i don't know personally becky you know you know we finally have another third player on film 
camera market. So we have uh, Leica, we have Pentax, who is, who is about to release cameras next year, and now we have Lego as well. So who knows, maybe other manufacturers will follow. Yeah, who knows? Don't know what the image quality is going to be like, though. Looks like it's just pictures of someone's dog. <laughs> yeah, do you think the image is going to look a bit blocky? Yeah, just a tad. It's very cute, though. It's a very, very cute idea. For your weekend read and watch section, this week we have the Nikon Z600 mm f4 S TCVR review. Can a lens be worth fifteen and a half thousand dollars? And this is by Petapixel. Now, what they say is we have an optically perfect lens with a lighter weight design that we've never seen before from Nikon, all wrapped up with the added versatility of a teleconverter. The price may be high, but this is a specialized lens for professional sports or wildlife shooters. If you need the six hundred mil lens you know who you are and the cost will not put you off otherwise there are more accessible options for the nikon z mount shooter such as the 600 6.3 for example <laughs> exactly and to be honest with you this is a perfect template for any video you just change the name of the either lens so you can put camera name in there can it be worth this amount of money and you just literally put what you've just read into the description and you just change the name you just put either camera mode or lens mode on there it's perfect that's, answer. That's very, very true. And then don't miss our wonderful interview that Constantine did with Gray on our Friday live stream last week. It was a live Christmas camera chat with stories from the annals of Grey's and it was absolutely wonderful. So you can watch that on Catch Up on YouTube now. Absolutely. And that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us this week. Yes, thank you very much for watching and or listening. Please give us a like and a subscribe if you're on YouTube. If you're listening on a podcast platform, please give us a follow, a rating, a review. Tell all your friends, family, gift us for Christmas. Have you checked Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Amazon Unlimited recently? We are there with our podcast. Please listen it when you can and also definitely leave us a review. It definitely helps the channel. If you prefer to see us on the social platforms like Instagram. We do publish our photographs taken with some Nikon cameras that we use and Becky is available at... On Instagram at Rebecca underscore Danese. The shop is at Nikon at Grays. And I'm at Konstantin Kochkin. From all of us at Grays, we wish you a very happy holiday season. Enjoy your time. We will see you sometime in the future, in January 2024. All the best and take care. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. Bye.